All right. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Can we uh, see myself? Yeah, there we go. Good morning, everyone. I'm a very serious scientist who takes things very seriously. But hello. Thank you so much, for everyone, for attending. And thank you very much to our previous speakers. So I'm just going to flash up my talk now. See if I can get this to work. Sorry, one second. It seems to be in the UK and Ireland. We're having all the technical difficulties today, aren't we? Right. Can we see my screen? Yeah, it's just loading right now. Right. Well, we'll give it a second and see if that works. And but right. Good morning, everyone. Hello and welcome to Dr. Spider Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Arachnid. Disclaimer, I'm not actually a doctoral student, but I just love a good old pun of a title. So today I'm going to be talking about sort of science communication with venom and toxin animals and one, some of the best ways that we can uh, learn and do things to help promote the study of our animals. So brief profile. I'm a learning volunteer at the Natural History Museum in London. Uh, we out in gallery and we get all the visitors not just to look at them but to touch them to discuss things to ask questions that's the whole point of being on gallery and it is so good i've missed it so much these last few months because i absolutely love people's brilliant questions and just giving that opportunity for people to be like hey how does this work it's brilliant um, academic wise, I did my MSc last year looking at false widow and black widow spiders and their phylogenetic relationship because it is, as JP was just discussing, it's very a bit of a smorgasbord, it's a bit confused, it's not entirely clear. And I thought, brilliant, I want to fix that because why not? They're great little creatures. And, you know, as you saw in JP's talk again um, in the British media, they're just vilified beyond all belief. So, that was something that I wanted to focus on and I actually did end up working in Galway a little bit. Didn't see JP there but we were in the same labs. And finally uh, I am also an arachnid volunteer with the collections at the Natural History Museum. I get to work with the wonderful Jan Baccaloni and she has actually allowed me to recurate some of the Latrodectus specimens, all the Black Widow ones, which is just fantastic because we need to know, update the taxonomy, where the locations are and just seeing some of these brilliant specimens is, again makes my enthusiasm even more heightened. But the pictures I actually have on display here are, were collected by Evelyn Cheeseman, who was quite a significant figure in the museum. She was really one of the first women to get any acknowledgement within the museum and contributed hugely to the collections. So what is today's purpose talk, if I can get the slide to move? There we go. So the general idea of this talk is going to be what can we do to help people be less fearful about these venomous animals? Um, what can we do to maybe help overcome our own fear? So I appreciate that it can be very difficult with some of the animals we work with, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. Being able to work on better communicating why we're bothering to research these animals and the venoms they produce, and giving people an opportunity to give these animals a chance and look at them with a different perspective is really, so so important it affects a lot of things how people perceive our work and funding and um, just generally improving that knowledge base is really the goal and a quick disclaimer i'm not an expert science communicator um, some of you already have brilliant techniques different things are going to work for different people and that is fantastic it's not today is not about making sure that you do everything that i tell you it's about giving some suggestions so maybe you know what you can do next time when things go back to normal we're allowed to go to fairs or open days at universities or museums or conferences again. So what is, right, so first of all, let's talk about what's the main issue with the animals. Unfortunately, people look at these animals that we study, centipedes, snakes, spiders, all sorts of brilliant creatures and go, um, get them away from me. And this reaction stems from two things. One, people look at them and go, they're disgusting and evil. I hate them. Yeah, I don't want to see them. Or it stems from they're going to hurt me uh, and I'm petrified of that. Again, don't get them near me, which is such an oversimplification and also, you know, an unfortunate, very ignorant view of so many of these animals. Um, also, graphic design is my passion, in case you can tell by my wonderful, um, <laughs> you know, beautiful uh, butchering of a meme for this point. People have this first reaction. And it is you. You are that line of defence between these animals and someone walking away, carrying on with a uh, very negative and typically, you know, not, you know, the opinion is necessarily not very based in logical science or facts. So you are the person to be like, hey, actually, take a look at these animals from this perspective. And, you know, you might find that actually 
they're very cool. So you've got people with this reaction. What are the steps? Number one, get them interested. Get them over. Convince someone who's scared to come over. Tricky, but there are ways. Two, listen. No more elaboration, just listen. Step three, give them the old razzle dazzle. I will explain that. Don't worry. Go for it. Just go ham with explaining your research and all that. Again, I will elaborate on this point. And finally, a call to action. What can you do to make this person not only be like, wow, I this come over, I've listened to this person and I've had a chat with them and it's really good. And also they just wowed me with this incredible presentation of their research. What can I do now? Give them something to take away. Not maybe not literally, you know, it can be words, can be knowledge, but you know, literally helps as well. So what about getting them interested? Well, having a physical representation of your specimen is nine out of ten the best things you can do. So actually I have with me today, I think I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for one second. So it should just be me now on the big screen. Is that correct? Yeah. And so here is Leo, we can't hear you. Uh, are you maybe covering your mic with the Am I not being loud enough? That's the first. There we go. Hang on a second. Can we hear me now? Yeah. Okay, spider. She's about the size of my thumb. I could do an idea of how big the spiders are. When people see them in media, when people see them in articles, they often think like, oh geez, that's horrifically large. Um show them a physical representation. So again, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. There we go. So Having high quality photographs, that's my dad, by the way, taking a picture of a um, garden spider when we were walking the dog in the park. Having good, useful pictures of these animals can help. Having museum specimens can really help too, because they get to physically see them. And for some people, having the animal, I apologize for saying this, I know it's really blind. It can really help some people because they're like, okay, it's not going to jump, it's not going to run, it's not going to bite, it's not going to do anything. So, they will then take that and take a closer look at it. And of course, live specimens. Having a live specimen, that's the ultimate. For some people, they are probably going to think, oh, I don't want to come near that. But sell your animal. So with the false widow, I had a stall last year at Science Uncovered, which was a massive event in the Natural History Museum, talking about my research. I had live steatoda. And I would say to people, hey, they're like glossy Labradors with four extra legs. Come take a look. People laugh. People are like, what are you on about? You bring them closer. Take a look at the abdomen of the steatoda, isn't it? Can you see the beautiful colours she has, the wonderful patterns? Can you see? It's very shiny. Highlight the specimen, OK? Make, you know, even if you have to be, you know, perhaps a bit shallow and saying it's pretty, it's beautiful, that's fine, OK? Next, so you have this person over. Next, listen. People are going to say the weirdest things to you. I've been asked on gallery, what's a bad gem? I've been asked, why are moths made of dust? I've been asked, how do whales have sex? Just roll with it because that person's giving you an opportunity to talk about your research. That person's giving you an opportunity to discuss. They want to learn. They want to talk to you. So even if you are going to get someone like, I had a force with a buy that can bite me and kill me, have a chat. Be like, OK, well, tell me, where did you read that? Um, why, you know, what do you think happens? Blah, blah, blah all that kind of stuff. I heard that um, snakes are incredibly slimy. OK, well, let, again, let's have a chat about that. Why don't you come see this specimen? Why don't you do that? Listen to the person, take that beautiful opportunity to go with it and just relish in the fact that this person has wanted to talk to you, OK? And also be honest. Be honest with your own experiences. Were you arachnophobic? Tell them immediately. This person's like, wow, this person was scared of these animals, but they're not anymore. They're researching them. They have a connection. They want to now know how did you stop you know, being arachnophobic? Have you been bitten by this animal? What was it like? Take that and be like, OK, so I was bitten by a snake before um, and it hurt and it did this. And I'll tell you why it did it, because I was poking, I was prodding it. It was defensive. Tell people, assure them, you know, explain why this would happen. Give them the old razzle dazzle. <clears throat> Here's a wonderful paper on the black member. Um, I could tell you that Black Mamba has 
uh, dendrotoxin and free finger toxins, and it also has some adrenosine in their venom, which is why they are so, you know, toxic. Or I could make you a cocktail. So hello, have we got the screen back again? Have we got Neil? Yeah, it's just Hello everyone. This, this is the Black Amber. Graphic design is my passion. This is adenosine. So this is not a toxin part of the Black Mamba. This is actually this, you know, this is not toxin in of itself. What it does instead is that it could promote vasodilation within the toxins, which allows them to spread further within your body. It's an effective part, much like how orange juice isn't necessarily the toxic part of the cocktail, but it can trick you thinking you're not drinking as much as you can, which is why you might end up a lot more than it. You have dendrotoxin. This is dendrotoxin, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. You've got dendrotoxin, which is a uh, pre yeah, presynaptic venom, okay? A presynaptic toxin that affects potassium channels. Let's see if we can get this right, folks. Affects potassium channels and increases an excitatory effect on your um, if it is, yeah, potassium channels and your presynapse. This can induce things like sweats and all sorts of things. What I'm pouring in right now is a sugar syrup with a lot of red dye mixed in with some red wine. So that's how you get that. It's going to work. And finally, you have uh, free finger toxins, including alpha neurotoxins, which block the chemicals from binding at the postsynapse, leading to paralysis. This is the deadly stuff. This is thin with blue food colouring. This is disgusting. All right. This is the part of the cocktail that's really going to give you a bad day. Saw that on the top. There is a rough black mamba cocktail. Do not drink this, it is disgusting. And also, you know, in a black mamba, it would kill you. So here is a very disgusting, and very weird looking All right, so I think we, we may have just lost Leah there due to uh, some technical difficulties. Um, Leah, can you hear us? Oh, he yeah, hi, sorry, has it all gone to pear-shaped? Okay, I think you're, you're back now though, so that's good. Here, we'll get hi, you hello. Tell you what, I, I can wrap this up quickly. I'll just say, with this cocktail, you've introduced the idea that A, they um, are not everything in the animal's venom is toxic, and also that um, it's, Venoms are made up of multiple items. It's not a perfect analogy. It's not. It's a simplification, but you have started leaving them with a really interesting thing. So, what is that call to action? Documentaries. Have you got specific ones, or have you got ones that are just general, touching upon them? People love that stuff. All right. If it's got David Attenborough in them, people are probably going to laugh it up. Tell them, go watch Planet Earth Two, and you'll see this. That's always a great thing, even if you don't necessarily think it's relevant to your research. Local and global organisations are sublime. Surveys and identification with the British Arachnological Society. Immediately you can tell someone, check them out on Twitter and send them your sightings and they can add it to a survey. Instant, quick gratification for them. And also they might be more willing to participate in something. Broader interest with a focus on location are also really good areas just to encourage people to look at around them. People don't necessarily know what's there. And finally, Oh, so that yet yeah, finally social media profiles so you've got people who look at animals um who look at your animals in a more general position groups like the support women in arachnology for people who might not feel encouraged in that group you can say well actually check these out organizations and news uh made from scientists like arachnophiles and of course people who take those pictures are always a great shout as well to include in your work I'd like to say thank you very much for attending the first session today and to the International Toxin Team for organising. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I kept seeing it flashing up, saying it was a bad connection. Um, I hope you still enjoy the 
the mad rush of and I will take any questions and or observations and or discussions and or like my god are you going to drink that no thank you very much for listening I will stop sharing my screen now there we go hello brilliant thank you Nia um I think we've got a couple of questions which I'll hand you to Rohit for hi um <laughs> Do you think the sensationalist reports of bites and encounters in the media contributes to the extensive fear? Oh God, yeah, absolutely. You you saw the graphic pictures JP was flashing. Um, yeah, that absolutely. And that's very hard because you wonder how many science communicators and such. Things. It's always worth celebrating positive stories about your animal. That's a good thing to always promote and celebrating uh, people who say, hey, this is actually what's happening, like videos or Twitter, for example. It's a unfortunate. As long as newspapers print, there's always going to be a story about people talking the truth and try and ignore those. So that's my advice to that. Thank you for the question, by the way. Um, so is there any like particular case that you're proud of converting somebody from being my mum, my mum was arachnophobic <laughs> as hell. I learned arachnophobia from my mum. I was arachnophobic up until I started doing all this at undergrad with spider venoms. My mum had a flock of phalanges, which are the cellar spiders, the ones with the really long legs and tiny body crawled on her. And I remember as a child very, very vividly, the whole family freaking out and her panicking and taking like whipping off her shirt because she had to get the spider off her. And that taught me spiders are bad. Last year, I had to collect uh, a lot of false widow spiders for this project, hence why I am collecting, you know, I can just whip one out within a night now. My mum, because I've been speaking, telling her about my thing, my mum actually collected the spider for me. This is a woman who freaked out about spider being, but here she was a year later sending me a picture like, hi Leah, I just caught this. Um, is this the one of your false widows you need for your project? It was that's what, isn't that great? Just seeing someone that you love going from total fear to actually really appreciating what you're studying. So that's why science communication and all the people who have presented today and you being here, such a great thing. So that's my case I'm most proud of. My mum. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for your talk. No, thank you. It's been great. So that is it for our